Hey, good morning. This is John Roach. I'm uh, with Transportation. I'm a driver trainer. Uh, I'm here to show you the 2015 buses that we've acquired. For those of you that aren't familiar, there are certain things that I would like for you to know that would assist you in the operation of this bus. Uh, I'm going to start here at the fuel door. This is a lift style bus and we have a lift door on the other side and I'll show you that. But the fuel tank is on driver's side of the bus on the lift buses. Now on the buses without a lift door, it is on the passenger side of the bus. The reason I want you to uh, pay attention here is when fueling these buses, you want to uh, exhibit extra caution and care because as they come near to being full, they have a tendency to splash back. We have had more than one driver covered in diesel. Please be very careful. Pay attention to what you're doing when you fuel this bus. All right. And we'll go from here on around the bus. Um, if you're at all familiar with these buses, you notice that they are extremely long from the rear axle to the back of the bus. The situation that that creates is a situation of something known as tail swing. You really need to pay attention when you make your turns left, the back end swings to the right, or you turn right, the back end swings to the left, about three or four feet. So the problem with that is, from here at the axle to here, the rear bumper, as this swings out into the oncoming traffic, you run the real risk of contacting something. Pay very close attention to this, please. Okay, you can see the lift door here. It would open and close as the others that we have in the district. The lift controls are here. This operates the lift itself up and down and of course as always you want to make sure that this door is fully closed and properly shut make sure the lights on the lift are out that way the bus will be able to move when you get back on all right as we come forward when we get up here to the student doors just in front of the student doors we have another fuel tank, but this is for DEF, diesel exhaust fluid, which is here. That's the only thing that will ever go into this fuel tank is DEF. We do not put diesel in this tank. Uh, check with your coordinators or the garage at your particular areas. It's either the mechanics will do it for you or you will do it yourself. That just depends on the area that you're in. All right, let's go inside and look at some things. Position, turn it to run. Do not start it. Allow the gauges to sweep through a full time. Okay? Once they have, then you start your bus. Now you wait for the voltage to build. Once your voltage is above 13 volts, and this is important, you can now turn your accessories like the air conditioning on. but it must be above 13 volts is what you want. You would turn your other accessories, your radio. Go. Much better. Okay, but always let the gauges sweep through and come back then start your bus. Make sure that it registers above 13 volts before you turn the accessories such as the AC on. Put your here, here, and here. Okay? Now, when you come back from your run, what you want to do at that point is turn your air conditioning units off. Let your bus idle down for a minute or so, and then turn the engine off. All right. On this particular bus, this being a lift bus that transports wheelchairs, there is a switch on the left side panel of the driver that operates or powers the lift. So you must turn that on in order for the lift to operate correctly when someone goes to load a wheelchair. But something you need to understand once that wheelchair is loaded and the door is closed and the individual has come back onto the bus what you have to do at that point is you must turn this off 
failure to do so will not allow the park brake of your bus to release and you are parked right there until you do correct the problem. So please pay attention. If your bus doesn't roll because it won't let the park brake release, it's because the lift switch is on and should be turned off. One of the things that I want to show you is pertaining to the DEF or the diesel exhaust fluid. Here's the gauge for that. You'll notice it counts down. One, two, three, four, turns amber, then red. If it comes on in your route and turns amber, that means you need to refill it when you arrive at your uh, compound. If it turns red during your route, continue your route. Don't stop and turn your bus off, just continue because you'll have sufficient DEF and when you arrive at the compound at that point in time you would refill it. I want to make sure that you understand that. The next thing I'm going to show you are the icons that you will see periodically during the operation of the bus. And those are these little ice cream lying on their side cone shaped things which indicate exhaust temperature. Uh, the DEF, uh, in accordance with the regenerative process of this bus, they function as the bus is in route. Now there will be times when it will come on during the route. When you make a student stop, these lights will go out and then they will resume once you start again. So there's nothing wrong. If you see those, that's a normal, a normal process with the bus. Okay, I want you to be aware of that. Now one of the neat features of the bus, when you go to do your pre-trip and check all your lights externally, you simply turn the key to either run or accessory. I turn it to accessory, that allows the door to push open, and you hit the light test button. And what you'll hear is the beep and kind of a countdown. Okay. All right, now having hit that button, what that does is that will turn every one of your lights on. The red student stop lights, the amber student stop lights, you can see the safety or stop arm comes out, turn signals, hazard lights, high and low beam headlights, all of your clearance lights will uh, <coughs> enact or engage. Uh, as you walk around your bus inspecting the wheels, lug nuts and the oil leaks at the hub seal and the axle seal, you check your lights at the same time. Stop lights, stop arms. Reels again, lug nuts and oil leaks, things we're looking for. Turn signals. When you get to the back, start at the top, you've got your clearance lights, your student stop lights, your student amber lights, turn signals and hazard lights. You have your tail lights and brake lights. You have your reverse lights. They will all light up with that one switch. Continue around the bus. Doing your pre-trip inspection. Again, wheels and tires, lug nuts, rims, things such as that. And then we'll go back onto the bus and I'll show you how to turn it off. So what you would do at this point, now that you've done your pre-trip inspection, you can either hit the brake pedal to stop the process or you can turn the ignition key to the off position. And that will turn this whole lights off. At this point you would go ahead, start your bus, and then you can do your internal pre-trip inspecting all the emergency exits, making sure that they function correctly. All right. Now one of the features of the bus, uh, these buses have disc brakes on all four corners and they work extremely well. The mechanics Mr. Chico request that you leave this switch here engaged. This allows the exhaust and the transmission to work together to slow the bus when you lift your foot off of the accelerator. I call it a Jake brake, but it does slow the bus down. It automatically brakes the bus. Now, if you don't want to stop that quickly, you simply put your foot back on the accelerator and it continues. Uh, it will slow the bus until you reach approximately 15 miles an hour. At that point, the effect will stop and the bus will tend to freewheel or coast. So be aware of that and please leave these engaged. This is very important. This saves tremendously in maintenance and repair costs. All right. 
Now when you arrive back at your compound, what you'll do at that point is you'll turn the air units off, your accessories, let your bus idle for a minute or so, and when you turn the bus off, you'll hear an alarm sound. You're going to have to come out of your seat, walk to the back of your bus, and reset the alarm.